Hello there, and welcome back to my channel. The keen observer of this channel might have noticed that I recently got a new watch and have since then been tracking the quality of my sleep. Yeah, I know, it could be better. But what does good quality sleep mean? Why did I not get any? And what can I do to improve that? And why the hell did I speak about cherries in the video title? Must be the sleep deprivation. Or is it? Let's find out and debunk the science of sleep. Having all my data available for my watch tracking my sleep every night, I became slightly obsessed with the topic of sleeping. How much is enough? What does good quality mean? How can I improve my sleep? And why am I still talking about cherries? Let's start with the basics. Sleep on cue. How does our body actually know when it's time to sleep? There are two main factors that determine when our body wants to sleep and when we want to be awake. One, circadian rhythm. The first of the two is a signal that is deeply embedded in our brain. Often called the internal clock or body clock, the circadian rhythm creates a cycle that makes you feel alert or tired at regular times of the day. Or night, I guess. The circadian rhythm is on average 24 hours long for humans, but slightly differs from one person to the next. But it is not only different in length, but also in the timing of the tiredness and alertness peaks. Which means some people are morning types, having their alertness peak early in the day, but then also getting tired early. And others are evening types, who go to bed late, but then subsequently also wake up later. 2. Melatonin the second factor is a chemical substance that builds in your brain and creates the urge to sleep. The longer you are awake, the more melatonin is built up in your body, putting pressure on it to go to sleep. But what exactly is melatonin and how does it work? Melatonin is a hormone that works in your body like a circulating messenger. Its release from the pineal gland at the back of your brain begins shortly after dusk. Really, melatonin is nothing else but a megaphone in your body shouting, it's dark! at everything on its way through the bloodstream. This means it regulates the timing of when sleep occurs, but has little to no influence on the generation of sleep. Which is why melatonin tablets are not really a good sleeping aid. While you sleep, you slowly reduce the amount of build up melatonin and start fresh the next day. But what else happens while you sleep? Sleeping in phases. As many of you might know, sleeping isn't just closing your eyes and dreaming of a better world. It comes in different sleep stages. Awake is actually one of them, although the shortest one. If you wake up a few times a night and think something is wrong with you, think again. It's actually not that bad and pretty normal. On average, this makes up 2-5% of your sleep. The majority of time we're spending in the light sleep stage, between 45 and 55%. This is where your muscles relax, your respiration and heart rate slows, and your body temperature drops. Usually, this occurs several times between the other sleep stage cycles. Waking up in this phase is the easiest and should make you feel well rested at the end of the night. On the other end of the spectrum is the deep sleep stage, in which we spend between 13 and 23% of the night. In this phase, your blood pressure usually drops, and your brain kind of goes through a waste flush cycle, showing slower brain waves. This phase is great for recovery as it promotes muscle repair and growth, as tissue growth and cell repair occurs in this time. Waking someone out of deep sleep is hard and usually leaves them feeling disoriented and groggy. And then there is dreaming. Vivid dreams occur during the REM sleep. REM stands for rapid eye movement, which is what often happens to your eyes during this stage. Your body is actually very active during this stage, experiencing increased heart rate and respiration and a non-regulated temperature. But your body is smart. Although all these signs look like you're ready to be active, your body actually becomes immobilized to prevent you from acting out your dreams. If you have a decent REM phase, on average between 20 and 25%, this can be super beneficial for memory, learning and problem solving capabilities in your brain. Sleep and numbers. Okay, so we understand the different phases of our sleep now. But what about the numbers? How much sleep is enough? This is actually a really tricky question. Every human as an individual is different. Some people state they can happily live and work with as little as four hours sleep per night. Well, I am not one of them. 
But what does the science say? A whole lot and at the same time very little. There are numerous studies that show that sleeping too little and sleeping too much is bad for you and can lead to serious and numerous health implications like weight gain, obesity, diabetes, hypertension, cardiovascular disease and stroke, depression, anxiety, suicidality, impaired immune function, increased pain, impaired performance, increased errors, greater risk of accidents and overall an increased risk of death. Yep, you heard me. Death. The old saying, I sleep when I'm dead, is therefore a bit unfortunate. So how long should you sleep to avoid all this? Generally, the recommended consensus for adults is between seven and nine hours, averaging at eight hours per night, as stated by the WHO and the US Center for Disease Control. But sleep duration is not the key to a healthy life alone. The other major factor is sleep quality. My watch gives me every morning a little sleep quality score on a scale of 1 to 100. And this is where it gets even more tricky. What do you define as sleep quality and how do you measure it? Sleep quality in general has a lot to do with how fresh and recharged you feel when you wake up. The definition of sleep quality can vary and is something that is hard to quantify and measure. This meta-analysis shows the difference in definition of sleep quality of several studies and highlights the fact that the majority of the data is self-reported. To this day, there is no consistent guidance available from the scientific community on what constitutes normal or optimal healthy and good quality sleep. Anyway, a more scientific approach to look at how good or bad your sleep really was is to look at sleep patterns and interrupted sleep using so-called hypnograms. Through the changes in body functions that I explained earlier, your sleep phases can be tracked. For the sleep score that my watch tells me, a whole range of elements are considered that contribute to this. It includes how many times I woke up during the night, when those awakenings occurred and how much time I spend awake after going to bed and before getting up in the morning. Continuity is key. If sleep is interrupted a lot, it disturbs the formation of sleep cycles which support the restorative processes. Excessive tossing and turning at night, even if you don't wake up or remember waking up, can also reduce your sleep quality. Five ways to improve your sleep. Scientifically approved. So we learned that bad quality and not enough sleep all the way to insomnia is really bad for us. But what can we do to improve our sleep? Here are five ways to improve your sleep, all backed by science. 1. Sleep routine. One key factor is keeping a regular sleeping routine. This includes setting aside enough time for a wind down in the evening before you go to bed, but also going to bed and waking up at the same time every day. This kind of fine tunes your inner clock to a specific sleep wake cycle and helps you find a rhythm where your body knows exactly when to feel tired and when to wake up in the morning. As Bronte put it so poetically, a ruffled mind makes a restless pillow. So winding down and clear your mind will help you get a better sleep. 2. Light. You probably know this already, but too much light in the evening before bed can be bad for your sleep. Humans have this brain structure called SCN, suprachiasmatic nucleus, that regulates the levels of melatonin that the pineal gland expresses. During the day, melatonin is suppressed because it's light outside. In the evening when it gets dark, melatonin is produced and sent through your bloodstream to signal you to get tired. Unfortunately, if you're using a lot of devices with bright screens in the evening, this is recognized the same way as if it's light outside and not enough melatonin is produced, which can reflect badly on the quality of your sleep. It is therefore recommended that you put away devices like phones, tablets and laptops at least 30 minutes before going to bed and also dim the lights in your house if you can. If your bedroom is quite bright from street lamps or an early sunrise, you could try blackout blinds or a sleeping mask to help you sleep better. 3. Noise Another fact that is particularly unavoidable for people living in big cities like Melbourne is noise. Our brain is kind of hardwired to respond to our environment. So if you hear loud noises while you sleep, chances are you will wake up. And this can not only disrupt your sleep, obviously, but it can also prevent you from transitioning into deeper sleep stages during the night, which are more restful and restorative for your body. Noises can come from everywhere outside your home or even from your snoring partner next to you. As they are sometimes unavoidable, you can try and drown them out by using a white noise machine or a sleep cast or just the good old-fashioned earplugs. 4. Temperature 
Comfort is probably the most important factor for sleep and part of that is the temperature in the room. Research suggests the ideal temperature range for your bedroom should be between 15 and 19 degrees Celsius. Bear in mind though that what is comfortable in terms of temperature can vary from one person to the next and make sure nobody's sleep comfort is disrupted by a too hot or too cold temperature room setting. For your internal body temperature on the other hand, a hot bath or a hot shower before going to bed can be beneficial particularly in combination with the quick cool-down you experience afterwards, which can make you feel sleepy. 5. Space Last but not least, it is good practice to separate your spaces. Your bedroom should only be for sleeping. TVs, computers and particularly work-related things should have no space in your bedroom to strengthen your mental associations between being in bed and going to sleep. It also reduces the amount of stress hormones your body spills out by winding down and not thinking about work, which will hopefully help you feel more rested and relaxed and therefore fall asleep faster. What's cherry got to do with it? Okay, okay, you can't sleep, now what do you do? For many people the next step is go to the pharmacy and get some form of over-the-counter sleeping pill. But, as I said before, they often contain melatonin as the active compound, which won't actually help you generate good sleep. In the best case scenario, it makes you tired, but the sleep will leave you feel drained and exhausted. But recently, a new functional food came into the spotlight that promises relief from sleeping issues. Tart cherry juice. Can this natural remedy really make a difference? Well, cherries, particularly sour or Montmorency cherries, have been demonstrated to provide a variety of health benefits. The juice of sour cherries, also known as tart cherry juice, can help fight inflammation, reduce muscle soreness and boost your immune system. Now, recent research suggests that tart cherry juice can also help people sleep. But how? The benefit is based on the fact that tart cherries contain the essential amino acid tryptophan. Tryptophan helps the body produce melatonin and is seen as essential for a good night's sleep. Every 100 grams of tart cherries contain about 9 milligrams of tryptophan. For the daily requirement of about 250 to 420 milligrams for humans, this would be too much cherry juice to drink. But studies show that including a glass of tart cherry juice in your evening bedtime routine has in fact beneficial effects on your sleep quality. It is basically the opposite of coffee for your brain. So it seems to be a good addition for a healthy and balanced diet. Right, now that that's done, I can sleep in peace. Meanwhile, you can let me know if you have tracked your sleep quality before, what you do for a better sleep, and how many toes you think you could stomach in one day. I'll see you in my next video. Until then, stay sciencey.